So for our next type of test, we're going to discuss the Fisher exact test. Now before we do the Fisher exact test, we're going to create another table. Now this particular table I'm going to create here is going to be one that looks at the rank, like a new rank is coded as one to four, with one being freshman, I believe, four being senior, and it's going to be um, comparing like whether a freshman, junior, senior, whatever, and whether or not they have any military service. So we'll just call it rank um, military as the table name, table, and then we'll just call it, you know, military comma rank. Okay, and now when I do rank underscore military, you'll see this. Okay, um, when I did rank, you can see that I had some text variables in there that make this not... We've got way too many categories or whatever going on here. So, I'm going to redo this and do rank military and then use new rank because that fixed some of these out, um, ones that weren't properly named. And then when I remake our table, you can see military being zero or one, one being yes, and you can see these. Out of all the people that are coded as one, which would be freshmen, nine out of, you know, nine plus 425, so nine out of 434 people that were freshmen had res responded to having some service. So you may be interested in seeing if there is a significant difference or whatever. So you could totally use the, the chi-square test on um, this table we just created called Rank Military. You could totally um, do that. Now, since the um, category has all these levels, you would have to do summary. All right? you could do summary on that particular rank military. And when you do it, you see the chi-square test says that there is a significant difference. Now, the numbers here, these represent the, the cells. This is a cell, that's a cell, this is a cell, this is a cell. There are some rules of thumb on when to use Fisher exact tests. Now, this is a large, well, it's not that large of a study, but it's larger than the types that you usually would use a Fisher exact test. On a Fisher exact test, if a few of these numbers were five or four or three, you'd want to use a Fisher exact test. Um, Fisher exact tests are for whenever you've got a high frequency of small cell counts. When I say small cell counts, I'm talking like numbers that are like five, four, some people even use the number 10 as a cut point, but the less than 5 tends to be the, the normal. Some people will say use the, um, the uh, Fisher exact test if, if any cells that are less than 5. The general rule of thumb is if, um, about if 20 percent of your cells, here we got eight different cells, say like two of those eight have like less than five you would use a Fisher exact test. So we can still do a Fisher exact test. So I'll just do Fisher.test and then what do we want to compare? And if we want to compare new rank, comma, military, it will run it and it does. And we got a p-value there of 0 0.008, which means that there's a difference in the frequency of having or uh, current or previous military service by college rank in terms of freshman versus senior, um, freshman versus sophomore versus junior versus senior. Here was the chi-square p-value, here's the Fisher exact test p-value. Easy enough. Um, in the event that you had a two by two table that was like, we can create one, you know, so we'll just do uh, e-sig 30 day, um, or we'll do e-sig 30 print female. That will be the name of my table. And I'm going to look at e-sig in the last 30 days, 
comma, being a female. And I have to tell it that I'm making a table. All right. I don't have to necessarily make the table, but I, I tend to want to see what I'm, what I'm looking at before I would go ahead and run the test. So eSig30 female, so that's the table we had just created. You see that? All right, so here are the numbers, 130, 100, those are our smallest numbers. We would totally use a chi-square test here. But if you do type in Fisher test it, for this particular table, since it's a two by two table, I have to type in the name of the table. The table name is eSig30 underscore female. It goes ahead and runs it. And not only does it run the, the exact test, it also gives us the odds ratio of 0.42. And we'll talk about odds ratios a lot more um, as we get into logistic regression, but you may already remember that odds ratios like 0.42 would suggest that there is a inverse association here. So e-cigarette use goes up, you know, then female is, you know, as that's coded as one, that makes it go down. So it's a protective effect. So we'll discuss that here a little bit more later, but in this example, the Fisher exact test gives us that odds ratio. So we're going to now go into logistic regression here in a little bit. I'm going to give you some review videos on how to interpret odds ratios. Odds ratios are really commonly used in public health statistics, like really commonly used. So you've done some of them by two by two tables, but um, the world is not a two by two table. You know, there are so many other factors on whether or not somebody's probably likely to use an e-cigarette or not, whether they're a female or a male. Obviously, the gender is likely a very important factor, but there are many other factors that you could imagine that could increase the likelihood of somebody ever using an e-cigarette or not, or using one in the last 30 days in this study. So we'll cover that more here in a bit. So when do we use Fisher Exact Test? When any of those rows are really small, like or any of them cells are really small, but particularly when you know we have several that are really small, like less than five. So we didn't have any examples here that would have, uh, have required us to use an exact test. So we would be okay just using the chi-square test for this example, for these examples. But you can see how to do the Fisher test already. So that's all for this particular video. So we're going to get into logistic regression next.